Welcome back to Sports Betting Truth, where it is my goal to give you actual sports betting advice without the touting, shilling, hype, or false promises. And today is going to be a different video, at least in terms of this channel. Because if you've watched this channel from the beginning, you will know that what this channel is about is long-term profitability when it comes to sports betting. And my belief is that you can only do that when you use a model. And even though my stance on that has not changed, I feel like this video is still important because I got a revelation this weekend. So this weekend, I spent over 20 hours sitting at that computer over there in R, writing my new baseball model for whenever baseball comes back, right? A very ambitious project. A lot of work and time has already gone into it, and I'm only like maybe 20% of the way done. All that work, and yet I'm still so far away from being finished, and it dawned upon me how many people out there actually have the time to do what I just did this past weekend and sit down and just not only take time to write a model, but even learn how to write a model in the first place and learn languages like R or VBA or Python and all of that? Not very many, probably a very small amount. And here at Sports Betting Truth, we represent everyone who wants to bet on sports, not just those who have the ability to have time and the knowledge to write models. One of my big inspirations for what I do is Michael Shackelford. He owns the website wizardofodds.com, and it is a website kind of like mine, only he deals mainly with casino games, you know, table games, slot machines, all of that. And his website is odds and strategies for casino games. But here's the deal. There's only really two ways to beat a casino, and that's to count cards at blackjack or find the video poker payout tables that pay back over 100%. And yet he has all these guides on odds and strategies on how to play casino games. And no, his guides are not going to help you win money. What his guides intend to do is teach you how to play these games in the most optimal way to make your money last the longest and lose the least amount of money possible while playing these games. He could easily reconfigure his site to say, oh, don't bother unless you're playing blackjack and counting cards or video poker 100% payout tables. He could easily do that but he doesn't because he understands there's still value in playing these casino games and table games even though they are set up against you to where you cannot beat them in the long run. So that's the purpose of this video right here is to teach you how to bet on sports and minimize your losses in the long run. Now this video is not going to show you how to beat the books in the long run without a model. That's not what this video is for. It is to educate you on how to best bet on sports like a table game at a casino in which you minimize the amount of money you lose in the long run. You're going to lose without a model, period, no matter what, but this will make your money last the longest. So without any more time wasting, let's get into the 10 things you can do to bet on sports without a model to make your money last the longest. And number one is to be realistic with your expectations. You've heard me talk about this in my other videos before. I've said things like, drop the fantasy. Drop the fantasy that you're going to become rich betting on sports. And in this case, without a model, you need to drop the fantasy that you're going to make any money on it. I know a lot of people who take up sports betting expecting it to be a side income for them or another source of income, make some money on the side. Even then, that's unrealistic without any kind of model. So you need to be realistic with your expectations. And that is you're going to lose. That's one of the Ten Commandments of betting on Michael Shackelford's Wizard of Odd website is thou shalt expect to lose, and it's no different here as sports betting. Betting without a model, you're going to lose. The idea is to minimize your losses if you're going to do it. So be realistic with your expectations. If you're getting into this thinking it's going to be a side income for you, you're not going to survive because you're getting into it for the wrong reasons. You have to go into this knowing ahead of time you're going to lose and that the money you do lose is the price you paid for the entertainment of having the bet. And in your opinion, the money you lost was worth it in terms of the entertainment value it provided to you. So be realistic with your expectations. You're going to lose. If you cannot accept or grasp this, don't even bother. Number two, only bet with money you can afford to lose. Now, it might be a little extreme to go in with the assumption that you're going to lose every bet you make, but it's probably not a bad idea either. Assume all bets you make will lose and only bet with money you can afford to lose. Now, while that's not going to happen, in the long run, betting without a model, you're going to win about 50% of the time and you're going to lose about 50% of the time with juice being the difference. If you're in $100 per game better and you win 50 times, you win $5,000 and then those 50 losses, you lose $5,500. Over the 100 bet span, you lost $500. 
In other words, you lost about five bucks per game you bet on, five cents of every dollar you bet. In the long run, that's your theoretical loss. You're gonna lose about five cents of every dollar you bet. Keyword though, theoretical. In reality, you need to assume worst case scenario. So with a win rate of 50% on average in the long run, betting without a model, two standard deviations worse than that will be about 39.6%. That's where I would start. So if you only win 39.6% of your bets, all of a sudden that $500 theoretical loss betting 100 bucks a game over 100 games turns into a $2,600 theoretical loss. In other words, you're going to lose about 25 cents of every dollar you bet. That's what I would do in terms of budgeting. I would assume for every dollar you bet on sports without a model, you're going to lose 25 cents. That, in my opinion, would be the best way of calculating how much money you can afford to bet on sports. Assume a win rate of 39.6%, worst case scenario, and anything above that is extra. In the long run, yes, you will get closer towards that 50%, 5 cents loss for every dollar bet, but always assume the worst. And this is just for straight bets with a minus 110 juice. Which brings me to point number three, be careful with the exotic bet types. Parlays, teasers, round robins, pleasers, all of that, be careful because that's only going to raise your expected theoretical loss higher. These bet types carry a lot higher edge for the house. You're going to lose more of your money betting them, so be very careful with them. Parlays and teasers are the equivalent of slot machines in the casino. Your best odds when it comes to betting at a casino are at the blackjack table, the craps table, and other games that carry very low house edges, but the slot machines carry very high house edges. You know why? Because they're the easiest to play. All you do is press a button or pull a lever. And the rule of slot machines and casinos is that the more flashy they are, the more high tech they are with all the fancy graphics and bells and whistles, the higher house edge they have. It's always those run down, old, dirty slot machines that pay back the best. And sports betting is no different. Parlays and teasers are the fancy slot machines of the sports betting world. They promise the highest payouts. They are the source of these rags to riches stories you always hear about. But the trade-off for those high payouts is the fact that they carry a lot higher house edges, so they will grind you down a lot more. So in terms of budgeting for parlays, I would assume all of them lose. Period. Assume every parlay bet you make will lose. Teasers, not so much, but teasers, I would assume that for every dollar you bet on a teaser, 75 cents will be lost. That's how I budget those two bets. I'm not saying avoid those two types of bets because they can provide a lot of entertainment value. When I lived in Las Vegas, one of my favorite things to do is go to the Westgate on a Thursday night, get a bunch of teaser and parlay cards and fill them all out and pay like one or two bucks per card while Thursday night football is going on. And that was one of my favorite things to do. And for me, it was worth losing those $1 and $2 and $3 parlay and teaser cards because the entertainment value they provided to me on Saturdays was worth it, in my opinion. And I even won a couple of them. In the long run, yes, I did not come out ahead doing that, but for me, it was worth the entertainment value. I'm just saying, if you're going to bet parlays and teasers, you need to budget a lot more in terms of losses than you would straight bets. Number four is don't overthink it. You can sit down and read the box scores and study the stats all you want, but without being able to plug that into a model and quantify it and convert it into percentages and all that, you're wasting your time. You can spend 12 hours looking at box scores for one matchup and analyzing one matchup and looking at all the stats and everything, but you're wasting your time. No matter what you do, without a model, you're not going to be smarter than the odds makers. So honestly... The best way to do this is just to find a side you want to bet and bet it. Don't overthink it. Don't spend a lot of time doing it because you're just going to be wasting your time. So just for the sake of valuing your time, don't overthink it. Pick a side and run with it. But that's not saying that there isn't some research that can be done ahead of time. It's just not going to come from the stats and the box scores and all that. And with that being said, the next three items are three things that you can do research-wise that don't take a lot of time that can end up causing you to reduce your loss. And that brings me to number five, line shop, within reason. Now, not everybody has access to multiple books and everything, and not everyone lives in Las Vegas or a state where sports betting is legal where they can drive around all the sports books and get the best value, but line shopping can help, and it's not just about odds. Yes, you might get a half point better at another book or a money line in baseball that's 10 points lower than another money line, and that's all great. All that will add up in the long run, but what you really want to look for is things like reduced juice. If you can get reduced juice, that will help 
immensely. That'll cut your theoretical loss in half, for example. I do all my bets on reduced juice, minus 105, whether it be in Las Vegas, which is offered at the Westgate and South Point at times, or on five dimes, which is one of the options you can choose when you sign up is signing up for the reduced juice option. But whether it be getting a better line or better odds or reduced juice, that will all add up in the long run. So take advantage of that if you can. Number six, watch for reverse line movement. And it's kind of hard to find these things and getting accurate bet percentages on each side is, you know, it's kind of flimsy, but there are ways to find reverse line movement for real. If you do enough looking around and research and everything, you can find it. I'm not saying that reverse line movement alone is a way to bet because even if you bet nothing but sides that gained reverse line movement, it's still probably not going to hit 52.4% of the time to break even, but it will win more than it loses. Reverse line movement happens for a reason, and if you don't know what it is, it's, it's basically when a line moves towards a side despite that side not getting a majority of the bets. For example, the Lions are at plus three and they all of a sudden drop to plus two despite them only getting 15% of the bets. The Lions going from plus three to plus two indicates that the odds makers received a bet from somebody they respect very much on the Lions plus three and move the line accordingly even though most of the money is going to the opposite side. That's reverse line movement and there are ways to detect it. Betting reverse line movement alone will not win enough in the long run for it to break even, but it will win more than you lose, and it's worth approaching it. And then number seven, be a contrarian. If something looks too good to be true, it probably is, and that's where they come up with the terms square and sharp when it comes to sports betting. The square bets lose more often than they win. Now, if you watch one of my videos about fading the public, this is kind of what that is. Fading the public will win more than it loses, but like with reverse line movement, it's not going to win enough for you to break even, but it still wins more than it loses. So if something seems too good to be true, it probably is, and bet the other side. So if you're looking at all the lines and you're like, that, that looks easy, that looks too easy, right? Bet the opposite side. Just do it. Trust me, you'll win more than you lose. Not at the clip of 52.4%, but you'll be surprised. The last season I bet on college football without a model with was 2014 because the model I had for 2013 the stats where I got the stats for that model was no longer free so I you know didn't have enough time to readjust my model for 2014 so I just had to wing it and bet without a model in 2014. I actually had a very good year. I had a better year in 2014 than 2015 and 2016 where I bet with a model again. I won about 56% of my bets without a model in 2014 college football and how did I do it? I did nothing else but look at the lines every week and bet on games that I felt looked too good to be true, and I bet the opposite side. It made me cringe every week making some of these bets, being like, there's no way this is going to cover, and you'd be surprised they did cover enough. Now, that's just a one-season sample size. Obviously, if I were to keep doing that going forward, I would regress to the mean eventually. But being a contrarian is going to win more than it loses, just not at the clip of 52.4% to break even. Number eight, make it more about just money. And there's two ways to do this. Method one is what I call the win-win situation. For example, as a TCU fan, our rival is Baylor, right? So a win-win situation is what I did in the Big 12 championship game this past year. I bet on Baylor, right? If they covered, I won my bet. If they didn't cover, they got blown out and I got satisfaction from that. A win-win, right? That's the win-win method. Try to set up win-wins with the bets you make. You know, bet, the, bet on teams you hate. Bet against teams you like. Win-win. The other method is the double-down method, which is bet against the teams you hate. Bet on the teams you like. And that way, if they end up covering or if your bet wins, then it's like double satisfaction, right? It makes that win even sweeter. But on the flip side, obviously, it makes the losses that much more difficult great example of that would be when I bet on TCU against Baylor this past season. I bet them on the money line. They were up 9-0 the whole game, but a dumb turnover, and then Baylor hitting like a 60-yard field goal at the end of regulation forced overtime where TCU lost in three overtimes. It was gut-wrenching, but had they won that game, it would have been even more sweet having won the bet and TCU winning. So find ways to make it more than just about money. Those are two ways to do it. Number nine is to know when to walk away. This ties into the whole budgeting concept. This isn't for everybody, and like I said, you're going to lose. And there's going to be a time where you're going to be like, I've lost enough money, I need to you know, stop for a while, right? Know when that point is. Don't force anything. Because like I said, without a model, you're going to keep losing. And 
whenever you're not okay with losing anymore is when you need to walk away. And that transitions into the 10th and final point, have fun. If you're not having fun, why are you bothering? For some people, the money they lose is worth it because the entertainment value they're gaining from betting on these sports is worth the losses. But that's not the case for everybody. If you're not enjoying this, then why are you doing it? You have to find that equilibrium, that point where the money you are losing is outweighed by the entertainment value you are gaining. And you need to find out how much is that entertainment value worth to me? Because if you're not having fun, it's not worth anything. If you're not enjoying this, stop betting on sports. It needs to be fun because that's what makes the losses worth it. And if you're tired of losing but want to keep betting on sports, then you need to watch my other videos about building a model and start heading down that path because it's the only way it's going to happen. But if you don't want to put in the time and effort and energy it takes to do that, then follow these 10 steps. It's not going to win you money in the long run betting on sports, but at the very least it can make it more enjoyable and make your money last longer and minimize your losses and provide you value in the form of entertainment that is worth the money lost. For some people, they go to the movies and spend 30 bucks at the movies. For them, the $30 is worth the entertainment value they get from sitting in front of the big screen with the theater experience and eating popcorn and all that. For other people, losing 30 bucks betting on sports is worth it for them to make the three hours they spend watching that game a lot more entertaining. There is value on betting on sports without a model. I want to cater to you just as much as the people who bet with the model. This is sports betting truth. It's not sports betting with a model truth, right? The sports betting universe has more people out there than just those who bet with models, and I want to let you know that I care about you too. This isn't a ploy to grow my channel and gain more subscribers. I just think that there is value out there in betting on sports without a model, and this channel is for you as well. Well, that wraps it up today for Sports Betting Truth. Again, stay tuned right here for all your sports betting needs, whether it be betting with a model or without. This channel is for everybody. Stay tuned for more sports betting content. We got a lot more ahead. Until next time, this is Sports Betting Truth signing off.